Hello, stalkers, and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. To celebrate the milestone of 2000 subscribers, it was decided to make a Q&A, so here we are. You really asked me a ton of questions, so I'm afraid I won't have time to answer all of them, but I hope you will still enjoy the video. So without further ado, let's get right onto it. Questions about me. How did you discover Stalker? I think I was around 12 years old and I used to watch a YouTuber who made Let's Plays. And one day he made a Let's Play on Shadow of Chernobyl. I got instantly hooked by the game and bought all three titles. Since I had already seen a full Let's Play of Shadow of Chernobyl, I made the weird decision to start with Clear Sky. And oh boy, I was not disappointed. I don't really know how to describe it, but this game was so different and so good. It was just awesome. And since then I've been playing Stalker games and mods on a regular basis for almost 10 years now. What do you like about Stalker? There are many things that I like about Stalker, obviously. The atmosphere, the realistic elements, the varied gameplay, the music, and many other great features. But the thing that I like the most is probably the world building. The lore, basically. I think the setting is amazing, and I love the fact that the elements of the world are presented to the player by different ways. There are things that you can see for yourself, other things that NPCs or the PDA will tell you about, and then there are a lot of other things that are only implied or simply that we don't know about. I think this is quite realistic in the way that the player cannot witness everything by himself and will never be able to understand and learn everything about the zone. Because of this, there are many underlying lore elements that create a lot of questions in the player's head. For example, when you visit the X labs you wonder, who used to work here? What kind of experiments were they conducting? And what happened to them? Why were the labs abandoned like that? Since no answer is ever given to these questions, the player will start to speculate and make theories. And I just love that. Where are you from? Some viewers seem to automatically think I'm Russian or Ukrainian, but that's not the case. I do not speak or understand Russian or Ukrainian. I wish I did, because it would allow me to find more info about Stalker and make more interesting videos, but that's the way it is. Originally, I did not want to tell where I'm from, but since it was probably the most asked question, I'm ready to make a deal. So, if one of you can find my country and bring sufficient evidence to support it, then I'm ready to reveal it. Here's the first clue. It's in Europe. What's your name? That's an interesting question because the Anomalous Dugout is the name of the channel, not my name. I chose to give the channel the name of a place, a secret underground, hidden somewhere, deep in the zone, and surrounded by plenty of anomalies. So basically, an anomalous dugout. I'm just an announcer, a voice, like a host for that place. But some people call me anomalous nonetheless, and I'm fine with that. Have you read Roadside Picnic? So, for those who don't know, the Stalker games were inspired by the film Stalker, which is an adaptation of the novel Roadside Picnic. So yes, I read Roadside Picnic, and I liked it. It's not exactly like Stalker, there are a lot of differences, but you can clearly see the inspiration. Have you watched HBO's Chernobyl? Yes, I have. I think it's a very good series. I recommend you watch it if you haven't already. How many hours do you have on each game combined? I don't know, I never kept track of it. A lot, that's for sure. 
I think if you count vanilla games as well as mods, at least 2000 hours. What are the YouTube channels that you like to watch? There is one channel that I've been watching for a very long time now, which was a huge source of motivation for me, that is Vanya Important. He makes really good stalker videos. So Vanya, if you are watching this, thank you. Then more recently I've been watching small channels that make stalker videos. There is Lord Migusta, whom I made a post about, and IKVID, who has a series of videos called Why I Love Stalker. I think I was quite lucky with the YouTube algorithm compared to these channels, so please go check them out and subscribe if you like their videos. That would be awesome. The links will be in the description. What would you do if the zone was real? Alright, so there are a lot of questions around the theme that the zone would be real. Some asked if I would be a good stalker, what faction I would join, and how I would use my knowledge. Well, first of all, if the zone was real, I would not dare to go there, ever. I don't think I'd survive a single day in the zone. But let's imagine that I had to go there for some reason. Then what I would like to do is work for the scientists. I am a man of science, you see. So if I have to risk my life into the zone, let's do it for this cause. Besides, I think studying and discovering the secrets of the zone is very exciting. I would probably try to write something about it. Like a new updated encyclopedia for stalkers to store on their PDAs, with a lot of information about locations, mutants, anomalies, artifacts, everything. If you could add one completely new and amazing feature to stalker, what would it be and why? I think there are many small features and details that can make stalker better, but since you are asking for something brand new, I'm gonna say co-op gameplay. I think it would be amazing to be able to play the storyline and missions with a friend or two. Of course, the original games are not made for it, so that would be awkward, but maybe the developers will implement something like this in Stalker 2. With the new info we recently got on the game, it does not really look like it, but we can still dream. Alright, now questions about the channel. What made you create this channel? Basically, a lack of content. Stalker is my favorite video game series, so naturally I watch a lot of YouTube videos about Stalker, but there were always subjects and themes that I could not find any videos about. That was frustrating, especially since the world of Stalker has so many obscure and unsolved mysteries that I wanted to know about. When I understood that no one would make the videos I wish I could watch, I decided to make them myself. It was not an overnight decision. The idea floated around and grew in my head for years before I finally launched the channel. What is your motivation for making videos and replying to every single comment? My passion for stalker is my main motivation. I want to find out as much as I can on the world of the zone and find answers to all of the questions that I've asked myself for years. Then there is also the reactions and comments of the viewers that are usually extremely positive and really give me a boost to work more on videos. As for comments, I think it would be a waste to not answer them. Sure, it takes time, but I sometimes have great conversations with the viewers, I can answer their questions, and I think they appreciate when I reply. You like it when I reply, right? Besides, it increases the number of comments and thus the visibility of the videos on YouTube. Is YouTube your only source of income? Okay, I never thought I would get a question like this, but here it is. I will be very clear, I do not earn any money from YouTube, and I probably never will. 
Making stalker videos is like a hobby for me, so I decided to not monetize my videos. And even if I changed my mind and did allow monetization, I would earn so little that it would be insignificant. Will you ever do a let's play of any stalker games or mods? Honestly, probably not. I think there is plenty enough gameplay videos on YouTube already, and I want to focus all my time and attention on other kind of videos. That said, we don't know what the future has in store for us, so maybe it will happen one day. But for now, nothing of the sort is planned. What is your inspiration for the campfire stories? Oh, great question. The campfire stories on the channel are all completely made up by me, they are not official. However, I still use many canon elements of the Stalker universe as a basis for the stories. Some of them are clearly inspired by in-game events, such as the Great Invasion, others borrow ideas from cut content and design documents, like in the Dead City, and there is also some stuff I just came up with. For example, the Blackout Clan. I was thinking of making some sort of behind the scenes video specifically about the campfire stories, in which I would show all the elements of inspiration, as well as the techniques I used to create the scenes. So if that's something you would like to see, make it known in the comments below and I'll know that I have to work on it. What kind of tools do you use in-game for your videos? This question relates to the in-game technical aspects of making videos. As I said in the previous answer, I could make a special video that shows how the campfire stories were made, including all the technical aspects, such as the mods used, the camera commands, etc. So I will not enter into too much details here, but basically, I have a spawner mod for each of the three stalker games that allows to spawn items, NPCs, monsters and such. And I also use a Call of Chernobyl merge pack. The link will be in the description. How to use the camera? I feel like some of you can't wait to get some info about this tool. So here's a quick tutorial. Open the developer's console by pressing square and then type demo underscore the record and a name for your demo. Let's use one. Now you can freely move your camera using the controls that are described on your screen. To make a scene, press spacebar multiple times where you want your camera to go. After you're done, press escape and type demo underscore play one. The scene you just set up will play. If you are currently in first person mode, your character will not appear in the scene, but it will if you are in second or third person mode. Will you make a discord? Straight answer, no. I do not really use any social media apart from YouTube, and I'm completely fine with just making videos and chatting in the comments. I do not have the time, the resources, nor the capacities to create a Discord server, let alone run one. Okay, now questions about my preferences. What's your favorite stalker game? Uh, it's hard to say, I really love all three of them. My brain says Shadow of Chernobyl, but my heart says Clear Sky. Since I'm the type of person to follow my brain, I will say Shadow of Chernobyl. Who's your favorite character? I think Professor Sakharov. He looks like a good scientist, and that's something I admire a lot. He was the one to make the first Psy protection devices, and he even gave them to stalkers. Also, he trades pretty good stuff, especially in Clear Sky. Who's your favorite between the three game protagonists? Honestly, I'm not sure. They are all very badass and amazing in their own ways. So by default, I'll go with Strelok. What's your favorite side quest or quest line? 
Um, the Bloodsucker Lair quest from Code of Pripyat. I think going down in the mutant's nest with grouse is very exciting. Especially the moment when you sneak past all the sleeping monsters. And after that you have to get a canister of gas from a military column and use it to destroy the lair. That's an epic move. What's your favorite area? Easily CNPP South. It's huge, it's iconic, full of powerful anomalies and rare artifacts. It's also the place of one of the most epic battles in the franchise, the assault on the CNPP by the military during Operation Monolith. And cherry on top, the blowout that plays out in this area is in my opinion the most chaotic, but at the same time the most beautiful emission in the games. Reaching this place is the dream of any stalker, and always the biggest climax in the series for me. What's your favorite weapon? It's hard to say because I try to use different weapons every playthrough. But in the end, there is one weapon that I almost always end up using in all three games, and that is the SPSA-14, known in real life as the SPAS-12. It is a very good shotgun, and it has some nice modified versions, the threaded in Shadow of Chernobyl and the Carabinier in Call of Pripyat. What's your favorite artifact? Bubble. It's just your best friend. No side effects, best anti-rat capacity, and it looks amazing. What's your favorite anomaly or anomalous zone? I love the bouncing fireballs from the volcano anomaly in Pripyat. They are very unique and nice to look at. I also like the symbiont in the red forest. It's really dangerous, but it adds a lot of atmosphere to the area and it has some nice artifacts. What's your favorite mutant? The pseudo giant. It's huge and powerful. It looks ridiculous and terrifying at the same time. And its origins are quite mysterious. What are your thoughts on factions? Okay, so the most asked question was about factions, so I need to not mess this one up. I think that all factions are good in the sense that they each bring something meaningful and useful into the world of Stalker. They all have their good points, be it in ideology, equipment or gameplay, but they also have some bad aspects. This is excellent in my opinion, because it makes the factions quite realistic, and most of them are viable options for the player to choose. For example, choosing between duty and freedom can always be justified, as there are very strong arguments in favor of both factions, and their struggle is eternal. On the topic of duty and freedom, I genuinely think that both are good factions, not only for the player to join, but also for the equilibrium of the zone. Both factions have their own appealing IDs and equipment, and they both do things that are good for the inhabitants of the zone. If any of those factions was to disappear, I think it would be quite a disaster. In the end, I prefer to remain neutral and help both factions at the same time. Now, about my favorite faction, I already talked about it. It's the ecologists. Now, questions about mods. What's your favorite mod? So, I know that I almost only talk about vanilla in my videos, but believe me, I've played a lot of mods. So, it's quite hard to answer this question, but I guess I'll go with Oblivion Lost Remake. What are the best stalker mods? I think the answer to this question really depends on what you are looking for in a mod. Some want brand new storylines and quests, while others prefer to create their own character and story into a free play modification. Some wish for cut content restoration, others like new guns and realistic ballistics. And there are so many more possibilities, you get the point. That being said, some mods do seem to make themselves a place on top of the ocean of stalker mods. 
Personally, I think that Oblivion Lost Remake, Lost Alpha DC, OGSR, Wind of Time and most of the modifications based on Call of Chernobyl are excellent. But there are many other great mods of course, and the best way to rate them according to your own taste is to play them yourself. What modes do you play the most? The mode that I've played the most is probably Call of Chernobyl with a variety of add-ons. I've also completed Lost Alpha and Oblivion Lost Remake a few times each, and completely finished the very long Stalker Soup. But that was in the past. Nowadays I only play Vanilla Stalker and occasionally Call of Chernobyl, because the only time I play is to make scenes for videos. Will you make videos on mods? Well, if you are interested in that, yes, maybe. I've been planning to make a few videos to quickly present the best mods to play while waiting for Stalker 2, but it's never really been a priority. So if you would like to make it a priority, just tell me in the comments below, and I'll work on it. If you were to program a mod for Stalker, what kind of mod would you make? So I've made plans and concepts of mods for years now. Unfortunately, I do not have the skills to create mods. But if I was to make one, it would be a brand new storyline with a new main character, set between the events of Shadow of Chernobyl and Call of Pripyat. I won't tell much more because I'm thinking of recycling my mod material for other projects, since, you know, I cannot make mods and I don't want my ideas to go to waste. Moving on to questions about Stalker 2. Alright, now we get to dangerous territory. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I do not want to share my thoughts about Stalker 2. It is quite weird, because on one hand, I believe that my opinion on the matter does not hold any significance, but on the other hand, I do not want to influence what you, the viewers, think of Stalker 2. Therefore, I'll do what I think is best and keep my mouth shut whenever I feel like it is necessary. That said, let's move on to the questions. Are you excited about Stalker 2? Yes, I do feel excitement, but I also have many other feelings that mix up and that weigh heavily on my mind. If I can give a piece of advice is do not get overhyped. Just wait and see. What do you think about the recent Stalker 2 leak? Um, if you don't know, a few weeks ago an old build from the cancelled 2011 version of Stalker 2 was leaked. This stuff was instantly covered by numerous other YouTubers, so there is no point in me doing any video on that topic. Actually the same goes for any piece of news or info about Stalker. There are many other channels that already cover such things much better than I would be able to do. That's why I don't do it. Anyway, about the leak, I think some of the things in it are great, but other things were just not good at all. So it's a good thing that the new Stalker 2 doesn't have anything to do with that. Or at least that's what we were told. What are your expectations for Stalker 2? I think it's better to keep expectations low, even after the new trailer that came out. Speaking of which, what do you think about the latest trailer? I believe that I've not yet been able to fully process what was shown in the trailer. All I can say is that I've had dreams and nightmares about it. Will you make videos on Stalker 2 when it comes out? Maybe. I can't say for sure just yet. And there you have it. That was the Q&A. Once again, I'm sorry if I did not answer your question. But in that case, no worries. You can still comment under this video and I'll try to reply to every single comment. Anyway, thank you for watching, stalkers. And goodbye.